Welcome, everyone. I'm Robert Wolanski, the Communications Director at Heritage Auctions, and I am thrilled, delighted, nay, honored to be joined today by Chris Narrett, the world's renowned leading foremost expert on graded magazines, programs, tickets, and uh, everything else, correct? That's not true, but thank you. How do you fit, I'm a director. How do you fit all that on your business card? <laughs> well, what's so, weird is that yeah. that's literally the way you just asked me to introduce him. <laughs> so I feel as though I've been undermined already in this uh, discussion. <laughs> and to uh, his left is Mike Provenzale, the production manager in the sports category. Gentlemen, as always, I feel like I haven't seen you in hours. Yeah. We just did one of these a week ago for tickets. And it's interesting because Many folks complained that we did not get around to graded magazines and programs. Hence, by popular demand, we are doing one of these yet again today. So thanks Careful for what you asked for, people. Look, we, we do these as often as people demand them. They have demanded this today, so we're only too happy to be here. We're doing this, obviously, for you. So if you have a question and you're watching this live and not on YouTube uh, as a... Uh, pre-recorded event, please feel free to drop a question as we are doing this for you. And as Chris is clearly an inaccessible human being who is very hard to reach <laughs> at any given hour, uh, this is your big opportunity to ask him a question, ask Mike a question, ask me nothing because I know very little. But if you want to ask the question anonymously, please feel free to do that at tommyn at ha.com. Gentlemen, I feel very bad we didn't get the programs and tickets, but here we are today. So my question for you is this, and it's it's kind of a basic one to get things going, which is that this seems like a fairly new, this obviously is a fairly new category in terms of the, the magazines, the graded and slab magazines. Yet obviously comics has been doing this for decades. Other categories, pulp magazines and other places have done this. Why did it take so long for magazines and programs to enter the world of CGC grading and slabbing? You have to ask them. <laughs> well, I mean, I assume you have some idea. You are after all the renowned experts. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that people have been waiting for it. Um, obviously, there's millions of these publications that could be graded. And, uh, you know, it's not as easy to develop a slab right. for something that large. You want to hold one up? So. Yeah. And even some of like the Super Bowl programs are pretty thick and, right. and they barely fit in these slabs. So sometimes there's a little room wiggling around there. So, you know, that just points out to, yeah, it is, it would probably hard to develop a slab. Yeah. And what that, do you got there, Chris? Why don't you introduce This you? is uh, 1992, Brett Favre's first win against the Bengals, September 20th. It's in rough shape, but it's one of the only ones that CGC has graded. And we're going to get into that, how these population numbers are very, very low right now. Right. So, I mean, we, look, we can we can certainly get to that now in as much as that this is certainly the key to anything that CGC or any other place grades, which is, you know, PSA, the population reports are obviously very important. We've seen in video games, there has been a real demand for population reports in any new category. There is a low population report that people don't know that they should get them slab. They haven't been getting them slab. So what is the population report looking like for all of these at this particular moment? For just publications yeah. in general? Yeah, let's start publication. For I mean, it's, it's very low. Yeah. Um, you know, we like can it's, expect that it's going to change a lot in the next six yeah. months. I was going to say, I assume it dramatically is going to change in, in doing this and having auctions and, and certainly the popularity and the rise in prices is certainly going to get people scrambling for those old programs and for a magazine. And CGC right now must be getting flooded. Um, and the reason I say that is because I know that we just sent in a batch. And I think that the, the turnaround time is like six months or something. Really? When it used to be a lot less than that. And it just makes sense. You know, people are seeing the prices that we're getting on some of these Sports Illustrated or programs. I mean, the, the Wayne Gretzky first Sports Illustrated issue right there. I think that we sold one in a... It was lower than the, the 9.4 that we have right up here. We sold a 9.4 for 30,000. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so it's the same grade, and it went for $30,000, right. which is just crazy to me. Um, I can't exactly explain that high number. You know, we probably had it estimated at a fraction of that. But we don't, you know, we don't know the market until it sells at this point because they are so rare, and the population numbers are so so low is what I'm what I mean, you know, I just went on um, eBay to look at 
the raw Sports Illustrated first Gretzky covers. Yeah. There's a handful of them, but none of them would even grade a seven or a six. So you what know, are they doing on eBay? I'm just curious, what are they have? What are they going for on eBay? The the raw yeah. ones, not a lot. I mean, you know, some hundred dollars or under. But it's 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 interesting because you can go on eBay and buy raw programs or or magazines and then get them slabbed if they're high grade and they're a desirable cover like that. They go nuts in our auction. Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm shocked as anybody uh, at the prices that we're getting for them. But you know, who would have thought that? Uh, 1982 Sports Illustrated of anybody would be thirty thousand dollars, and it's not in the top grade. Um, you know, you can get a nine point eight or a nine point six on one of these, and and then what would that sell for? You know, I want to get to something you just mentioned a moment ago. In as much as there's a question, which is what is the strategy for improving CGC wait times? Is there one at this particular moment? As with the card grading companies that over the last two years have seen very slow turnaround times, adding graders isn't something you can do quickly. You know, all these grading companies are putting their name on anything they grade. So they're not just going to throw anybody in there or elevate an intern. Okay, now you're a grader. They have to go through training. They have to be vetted. Uh, the company has to be comfortable with them representing them as far as grading. So it, it is a slow process. And when things exploded, it took a long time for the card companies to catch up. And now CGC is seeing the same thing. I'm sure they're scrambling to try and find people that have the eye, the talent, the ability to grade these. You know, it's interesting. And somebody, here's a question that actually gets to something we were going to address a little bit further down the road, but I think it's a good time to do so. That Gretzky is a newsstand edition, correct? Uh, the 9.4 is a subscription edition. Uh, can you explain the difference for people between subscription editions, news, uh, newsstand editions, um, in terms of getting them to grade labeled you know somebody had it sent to them they kept it in pristine condition yeah i Were mean a, a subscription edition is is just that uh, one that was was subscribed by somebody and then it had a, a mailing label on right. it most likely for a subscription edition there are people that can take off the mailing labels and it's really hard to take off a mailing <laughs> label with without um leaving a trace of the mailing label on there that's a subscription I, edition right let me take a look it says subscription edition label removed and i don't know can you see where there was a a mailing label great example of the skill it takes to yeah, the i've never seen one that those. well to I the cannot. layman's eyes you cannot see that's it. very impressive but yeah so um the ones that are you know had the mailing label removed are going to be in theory worth a good amount less than the ones that you would buy at a retail stand right that never had a mailing label on them. Um, but, you know, all these attributes or, or, or facts about CGC grading these these magazines, it's it's in its infancy right now, and we're still learning. Right. So, what have you, you know, I, I want to get to that. What have you learned about this? Because this is obviously very new in any new sort of subcategory of what you get. You know, it's one thing to do with cards. been dealing with cards for decades memorabilia is what that is magazines obviously they're how many millions and millions are recycled every day how many are thrown out how many have you know in terms of the population in terms of what makes it something special and unique what have you learned about this that has surprised you over the course of the last several months in dealing with this it surprised me how few have been graded i know they you know recently started grading these but right. it's been years now a couple of years or whatever um you know Sports Illustrated right now has a circulation of 1.5 million. Right. When I thought nobody was subscribing to Sports <laughs> Illustrated anymore, what was their How circulation? You know Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs> what, uh, what was their circulation in 1975 or 1980? It had to be 10, 20 million. Right. Um, so where are all these? You know, a lot of them have mailing labels. And I think that the stigma with the mailing labels is people don't want to get them graded or don't think that it's worth getting them graded. Right. Um, but that's not true, not for the, the high-grade ones and the desirable covers like the Gretzky. Um, but I guess it just hasn't caught on yet. And the ones from the newsstand are rarer, and odds are if you had a subscription, you were more likely to keep them. But if you're just picking it up at a newsstand or in an airport before you go on, odds are you disposed of it. So well, at the very least, they're in rough shape now yeah. because they've been read and handled. And the minute you start, you know, if you read cover to cover a magazine, it's – it's going to have issues at the at the spine. It's it's going to crease by the staples. Um, 
yeah, you know, you're going to have folds everywhere and it won't be this nice 9.4 anymore. So it's amazing that, you know, this one from 82 has survived in that kind of condition. Now, let's talk about what makes them special. Obviously, this is special in as much as it's Gretzky's debut. Let's talk about, you know, I think people will listen to this or people hear about the rise in prices and getting magazines slabbed and graded and auctioned. And they'll go back and think, oh, man, I have that. Or, man, I have a thousand Sports Illustrated's dating back to the 1960s. Every one of them, because they're old, must be special if it's in great shape. Is that necessarily the case? Uh, you know, if you get them graded and they're that old and they're in nice shape, you know, it's it's worth it, really, because they're not worth much of anything if they're not graded. Right. Um, you know, you'll have your special instances like, you know, Mickey Mantle on the cover or Jack Nicholas on the cover, the, the, the greatest of all time, guys. But, uh, you know, if you have them in nine or higher, there's people that are putting together high grade runs of these. So, yeah. you know, they're going to be worth money. And it's something people have collected for a long time. I mean, as long I've been working at Heritage for 15 years and people weekly would call and say, oh, I've got this Sports Illustrated. And, you know, 10 years ago, we tell them unless it was the first Sports Illustrated, there's not much value to it. But that has completely changed. Um, you know, the debuts, the first covers for them, like this Gretzky one was his first cover, took him two MVPs to finally get on the right. cover <laughs> of Sports Illustrated. Of course, Jordan, Muhammad Ali, people like that. And it gets even deeper than that. There's Jordan's first cover, his first professional cover, his first Olympics cover. Uh, so there's those little sub genres of it that people are into. Very similar to ticket collecting. Absolutely. But we were talking before, one thing that, to my knowledge, that CGC doesn't do with their labels is put kind of the creative uh, attributes of what happened in the game on there. And I think that that's something that collectors would really want absolutely because it adds to the presentation when you're right. trying to sell that, you know, it, or show it off to somebody or show you it off have it on somebody. display in your office. We just sold uh bill Russell's first ever program, which did very well. His, what was it? His Celtics debut or something. And, um, it didn't say that on the label. So we had to put it in the description, which is fine. But when people are displaying these light tickets, they right. want it to say Bill Russell's NBA debut. And I don't know if they're going to do that. Um, Mike, can you get on that and talk yeah, to the I'll representatives to at CGC? Well, I mean, that's my question. And I'm sure people have that question. Do you have that kind of relationship with CGC to suggest, hey, it would be better for the collector, for the hobby to do that very thing? It's certainly been mentioned to them. We've mentioned it to them, but they aren't ready to do that yet. I do think eventually they will. It only adds to their brand when you look at what PSA has done with tickets and even cards that they can really modify it and personalize it if you have a collection. Um, it's something that adds a little extra to it. and A lot, a lot extra. Gives I mean, a lot of a information. We've talked about a lot. A lot of new people have come into the industry in the last few years or come back into the industry. Grading things and pop reports has made it a lot easier for them to get the information and get up to speed with the seasoned collectors. And adding those little notes is something that helps as well. Uh, you know, if you're going to estate sales or garage sales, you know, having that knowledge of, oh, this is their first uh, debut on the cover or this program is Favre's first win. You know, you wouldn't know that from looking at it, no, of course. Wouldn't. Um but having that knowledge can help you find some little gems that are in, might be uh, undervalued. And we were also talking about yesterday when we were preparing for this, uh, you know, we just sold a Wilt Chamberlain 100-point game program, Philadelphia Warriors. He's on the cover. Well, I was looking in – it, it was ungraded, by the way. Uh, so I looked in CGC's pop report to see if they've ever graded one because I'm like, oh, you know, whoever bought that could get a, a one of one on that. Right. And I couldn't find it on their pop report because I typed in Wilt Chamberlain. It didn't come up. I typed in Philadelphia Warriors. It didn't come up. Uh, I tried a couple other things and I couldn't find it. So it either means, A, I'm not a, good at searching uh, population reports. Possibility. Oh, very, very. Which is weird for the world's foremost. <laughs> it's, or, all, it's all up here. It's all up or um, they haven't graded one. Right. Um, there it is right there. Or, you know, or I'm just not. Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the pop report is has some way to go as far as becoming user friendly. PSA um, has come a long way on the ticket side of their pop report just in the last eighteen months, even. Um, so that will definitely help. That brings more people in if they can easily understand it. They can easily navigate uh, the resources. 
Um, but yeah, there's there's some improvement that could be made there. All right, so we'll, we'll get to programs in a minute because programs, I think, are to my mind, they're a whole different ball game, as it were, from magazines. Because magazines, obviously, you buy anywhere at any time for any reason. Programs usually sign signify that you were there as a ticket does. So I want I do, and, and something happened at that game. Something happened in that moment potentially. But magazines fascinate me in as much as that. You know, the other day I was at my local used bookstore and someone had dumped off an entire Sports Illustrated number two all the way to 53. They were just sitting in a stack being sold for five, ten bucks. It's a big stack. It's a big stack. <laughs> and I just assume that someone might watch this, someone might see the prices of graded slab magazines and go, I should buy all of these right now and get them all graded. And look, they're not going to be in great shape. They're going to grade out poorly, but they may it may cost more to get it graded than it did to buy it and to sell it for that matter. Sure. So I do kind of wonder what advice you give to folks who are who who learn of this and go, all right, I've collected every issue of Talk magazine or let's some random magazine that they That's a random one. Spy magazine. I have every spy magazine ever printed. And I'm like, all right, I don't want to go get those graded in slab. Is it worth my time? Um and money. Because there is an investment in getting for it an example graded. like spy magazine. Yeah. You know, if it, to me, if that's what you collected your whole life or your childhood or whatever, and you have the first issue of Spy Magazine, I think it would be cool to have it um, slab by CGC because their holders look nice. Yeah. Um, you can display them, you know, like we have the ones over here. If you're doing it for an investment or for, to, to make money, you know, it'd probably be a one of one or, or darn close to it in their population report. And I'm sure you're not the only guy around that was collecting sp or buying spy magazines so there's probably a little bit of a market for it but uh you know would you get the 17th issue that's in fair condition sure. graded no I, I definitely wouldn't um but uh if they were maybe high grade if you thought it was going to be a nine six or a nine eight in any of the issues right. you know, maybe um it just depends uh but you know you might want to get things graded like that that you plan on holding on to with the potential of maybe selling right. them but not you know, you're not sure if you're going to sell them. Well, for sports, obviously, you have the, you know, or even Time Magazine. You know, I've got the J.D. Salinger cover of Time Magazine. All right, that's very special to me. It's certainly something I really want to keep. You know, it's not in great shape. But with sports, it's different because you can say, all right, this is Gretzky's debut. This is Mantle's debut. This happened after a particular moment. Is that what separates sports from other contemporary magazines well like salinger that means something to you you're pass right. passionate about it and it might be the it probably is the first time he was ever on the cover so that's right. first right there i mean people are getting you know uh sports illustrated's graded that are the first on the cover tiger woods first on the you know right. first time on the cover Brett tom Farr, brady tom brady you know, like we, we actually sold the tom brady uh super bowl champions uh sports Illustrated. that wasn't even his first on the right. time on the cover and it went for crazy money Hard to estimate what Brady stuff is going to do these days, or if he's going to play or not play. <laughs> oh, but, but uh, all right. So there's thirteen thousand for that's not a look. That's a, a it's certainly a graded out high. It's a nine point eight. Yeah. So I assume that you know, look, we talk about this when it comes to cards. A card is valuable because of the grade, because of the it, it, not even necessarily sometimes a grade. A five looks prettier sometimes than a six or a seven or an eight. Sure. So what is it about this particular issue? Is it just the grade? Is it what is it that makes this one a thirteen thousand dollar magazine? And does that stun you that it is? Yeah, I mean, stun. we can't answer that question. Yeah. The people that were bidding on it can answer that question. Did they do it for an investment? Did they do it because they're trying to get all the early Brady items, cards, tickets, etc., in high grade? Um, I'm not sure. Um, but it went. It did go for crazy money. I don't think that the cover is particularly, you know, super scarce. Maybe a nine eight it is. Um, highest grade possible. High so yeah, so it's at the top. You know it's gonna be right. at the top. Uh, there could be more that come out, but Brady everything is doing great right now. And this could be he's coming back, he could add to his right. legacy. A lot of people speculating there with the modern side of it, a lot of it is speculation or gambling that people are going to improve. These things will become more valuable like we've got brawny james first uh <laughs> sports illustrated cover right there um that's gonna be coming up in our may auction it's a 9.8 uh 
if you think he's got potential or that that could be something that's going to be valuable in the future, you may spend a little more now than you might think it's worth at this immediate time. And there's right. very few of that one that have been graded. I think it's, you know, under five. Yeah, it's pop one of one. Oh, and there you go. Um, but see that, so that's to me another fascinating part of this because it's new because the pop reports are low. Obviously that significantly impacts the value. Is there some sense of that we, if you are interested in selling, if you're interested in getting it graded, now's the time to do it while the pop reports are low? I would recommend that if you have something special, the market is very high right now. Um, yeah, if you have something that's at the top of the pop report or a one of one, of course, uh, people seem to be paying a premium for them right now, especially the most popular athletes, you know, Brady and Jordan at the top of the list, but vintage guys too. Uh, Ali has always done well in magazines. Even before this started, Ali Mag, uh, Sports Illustrated did well. Um, but yeah, I would recommend selling now. Some people think, oh, well, it's just going to keep growing and growing. Maybe more people will get involved, and that always increases the numbers and prices realized. Um, but then there will also be more in the pop report. And if people are looking to consign their publications, especially like Sports Illustrated or you know mass produced circulation like that, we prefer um, and almost have to have them submit them to CGC themselves. Uh, and then if they get one of those high grades, then we would take it in for... for See, that's for the opposite of cards. It's the opposite of what you suggest people do with cards. You want them to get it graded first. And the reason for that, I think, would be because they take up so much room. Yeah. Um, if someone wants to consign 500 Sports Illustrated, we just don't have the manpower to process something like that. or the, the We have space, but we're not going to use the space for 500 and a lot of those are not going to be too valuable that's the thing is you know like you said a run of um sports illustrated or spy magazines or whatever some are going to have value some don't and we can definitely advise anyone on yes this one has potential this one looks like it would grade high um but yeah as we said it, it's in its infancy who knows where a lot of these can go but uh of course we're here to help advise people on what they have. And I know from years of working in this business, there's a lot of people that have been saving, holding on to magazines, waiting for them to become valuable, being told for years they weren't valuable. And now is kind of the opportunity to go back through that collection. What do I have? What's notable? Uh, and what can I make a profit on? See, it's fascinating to me because, all right, I get we recently sold the best graded Sports Illustrated number one, right? Yes. That obviously does well. It is a significant, it's a landmark moment in, in sports public. Always been popular. Right. It's always been very popular. Playboy number one's always been very popular. A few number ones of certain magazines have always been incredibly popular. Tommy, if you, there you go, there it is right there. It's fascinating to me that that highest graded sold for last year for 11,000. Gretzky sells for 30,000. I'm, I'm, can you explain sort of the disparity between prices? Well, realized? there is. 60 plus of and, the first one. And the right reason that there's so many high grade SI number ones is because there was a find of uh, thousands of them, probably. Yeah, it was in the thousands of Sports Illustrated ones. And they were then issued to collectors and put in this nice leather bound like folder. Okay. And sold as like a collector's item. They're all original though. And, but they were all in really nice condition. So that's where the majority of those are coming from. And, you know, there was no Gretzky's that were found like that. You right. know, they were probably just recycled um, when they didn't sell them. Um, or if someone had them, they were done with them, they got rid of them. Um, so there's a lot of SI number ones for, you know, the 69 eight set there are. There's hundreds or thousands of the other, one, the other lower grades in right. nines or eights. So they're not hard to get, but the demand is there because it's the first issue of Sports right. Illustrated, you know. Look, I picked up the other second issue the other day in my local used book emporium. Because I got to start going in there. <laughs> we can go afterwards. <laughs> All right. Because <laughs> someone's going to watch this and immediately go over there. Right. Yeah, they they probably there to beat them to it. Well, I mean, look, that. I mean, I guess it, it's. I find this all fascinating in as much as that. Look, not everybody collects baseball cards, but everybody you know has a magazine subscription to somewhere or has had hundreds of magazines sent to their house they've been waiting at the airport they've got a magazine in their bag i mean it, it is if there's ever an accessible collectible 
magazines that seem to be right at their forefront. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to do this because yeah. a lot of people are sitting on some of these real you know, treasures um, and they can take advantage of this crazy new market. I mean, it's, it's exciting. Um, it may be a tad volatile because we, you know, well, that was my question because yeah. the pop reports are so low. I assume that that, that by its very nature, so it's volatility. It, it, it will adjust it yeah. in time. It's the same with the Jordan, you know, the Jordan, Jordan, the 86 Jordan. Exactly. You know, you know the, the the higher the pot numbers get, the more, you know, the, the, the prices will end up adjusting. Right. And we'll, you know, in a year or two or three or four, we'll see what the true market of these are with a normal population. But uh, right now, you know, the market is is definitely a seller's market. And, you know, if people are holding on to any of these high grade, significant covers, they want to get them graded and maybe consign them, put them on eBay, you know, who, wherever. I will say that I just went to eBay, looked at their uh, past sold auctions on CGC graded programs and uh, Sports Illustrated. And they have very few, like we're talking a couple dozen really? sold programs that were CGC graded, which I thought there'd be a lot more than that. <laughs> But that tells you how new this whole thing right. is. Um, and there's there's not a ton of the SIs, um, but the prices that they got on eBay compared to what we were selling them for in our Platinum Night auction, our Showcase auction, our prices are amazing. Yeah. Well, and look, have we seen this bleed over into other categories? Have we seen the first Rolling Stone or the first or Nirvana's debut on Rolling Stone and things like we that? We haven't seen it yet, yeah. but we will. Yeah. And that's... That's where I think some real opportunities are to go online and, you know, find Woodstock's first, you know, the Woodstock program from 69, which there aren't a lot of them that CGC has graded, but right. they are on eBay. Um, but absolutely, I think some of the coolest programs and, and magazines are non-sports. Oh, yeah. I mean, I assume the first issue of Time, the first issue of, you know. TV Guide, the first issue of that with the... Uh... Who was Lucy, on it? Lucy and Ricky and oh yeah, yeah, and uh, Desi Junior and the baby was on there. That was the yeah, first issue. Yeah, I didn't know issue. that. I just watched uh, <laughs> we had the Ricardos recently. <laughs> the first time <laughs> Leave It to Beaver was on the cover. Yeah. You know, that's cool. Stuff. You know, those are things True that Star Trek covers. Yeah. as with any collector, that it has a personal meaning or you're passionate there about you it. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. something it's you're like interested in. Yeah. And there it is. That's the first. That's actually Rob about. when he was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Same haircut. <laughs> oh me. <laughs> but yeah, and music—that's a great example. What did that sell for Tommy? It's still going. It's at seventy-six dollars, I believe. Oh, there you go. There you go. I don't know what's the opportunity right there for. That's the first one. It's the first one. Oh. Wow, I just joined this conversation, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Always love a guy paying attention to the show. <laughs> I didn't think there'd be a baby in it. I don't know. Um, but that like... one sold for thirteen twenty, and that was an eight five. Sold uh, just a little while ago, a couple weeks ago, or no, a couple weeks ago. We are in two thousand twenty-two. I really, um, <laughs> it's uh, it's almost lunchtime. I'm a little weak, so. Oh, but there's okay. there's I'm an opportunity slow. now for people to look at okay, what hasn't gotten a big result yet? Um, <clears throat> like a popular Sports Illustrated is the 1998 Sportsman of the Year with Michael Jordan. The hologram, the hologram cover. Right. Everyone's very familiar. Well, 1955 Sports Illustrated was the first Sportsman of the Year they issued to Roger Bannister. So, you know, there's an opportunity there. If you have a high-grade copy of that, that's one that hasn't gotten a lot of exposure. Maybe the next one that comes out. a super out, cool cover, too. Yeah, uh, after he set the four-minute mile. That's one thing about those early SIs. They, they are so colorful and they're photographs, but they almost look like they were like drawn. Like they're not, they, they have a really weird finish to the covers and they're right. larger too than, than like these. Um, so I think that they, they present really well. And that's probably why one of the reasons why they're taking off so much because they will display really Definitely. neat if you, you know, have There's a Jordan cover there. right there. And we recently sold the uh, holograms that were used to create that in our last auction. But there's also the possibility of just whatever you're into, like the Sports Illustrated cover with the Mavericks after they won the title on it. You know, these things that have personal meaning to someone, they may not resell it, but getting it graded, having a high-grade one or finding a high-grade one of a special moment uh, when UT won the uh, national championship. And Vince, Young, of those Vince Young was on the cover. 
you know, it may not be rare, but it's something, I think that's why a lot more people are getting into it. It's something that can have a personal impact on you that you can collect. And they aren't crazy priced. You're not gonna have to pay five figures for most of these. A lot of them, even the top ones, you can get for a few hundred dollars. And one thing we didn't touch on, these do preserve yeah. the publication. You know, they are nice holders. Well, look, I, to that point, I, I, you know, the more I think about this, the less I find this to be any different than comic books, right? I mean, they're mass manufacturing. It's the exact same thing, right? Debut of Venom, Gretzky's first cover. It's, you know, there's very little difference. Is that a one to one there? Collector. It is. A <laughs> I didn't really. I don't but, know you know, they're in comic about. books. Modern comics are doing much better now than they uh, used to. When I started at Heritage, Barry Sandoval laughed at my uh, comic collection that I brought in for evaluation. It was all modern things that I'd read. But now they're seeing good prices for those modern comics, right. even though they aren't necessarily scarce. They're scarce in high grade, of course. Uh, but people want to collect what they know, what they watched, what they read, uh, the nostalgia aspect of any collectible. And uh, same with this. A lot of the modern things that 10 years ago we were turning away now are showing good results, and they're things we'd be willing to take on consignment. And I assume that there are subsets of this as well. Somebody asked a question that popped up on the screen a moment ago about mailing labels for celebrities, for instance. That's really a, we, we have done that in the That's past. That's a Neil really Armstrong. cool question, actually. Like Neil Armstrong. We sold Neil Armstrong's magazines that had his mailing yeah, address. Yeah, we sold a National Geographic he got with his mailing address on it uh, when he was 12 years old. And it was an issue all about space. And it had star charts in it. And it was obvious he had read it. It did not get a That's high cool. grade, but it was dog-eared. Obviously, something that was important to him, a huge factor in his life. So, yeah, if you're a collector, that's a very cool item. Right. And autographed magazines, I assume we've seen those as well. There's actually on eBay right now, one of these, I think it's in a six and a half or a four and a half. Um, and it's signed by Gretzky. And, you know, they want in the low thousands for it, but it's pretty cool, you know. Yeah. And Jordan, the only one. Jordan signed SIs, of course, are very <laughs> popular. Um, on the program side, we have a Niall Kinnick Heisman program right now that he's signed from when he won it. Uh, so that's an aspect of it, too, autographed copies. And what about magazines? Sports Illustrated obviously has published a number of issues with cards in them over the years. We've seen the cards do very well. What about the cards in the magazine? The magazine gets a nine point whatever. Do you, you know, what do you tell folks about it, the cards that are inside? I mean, the, the Sports Illustrated, number one, there were just basically photos of cards. So right. it was just magazine paper stocks. So they're not really cards. Sure, but the SI for Kids had the Serena but, Williams. Well, the I was Woods. just looking at the 1996 uh, Larry Johnson cover with Tiger Woods, that card in there. So there's some of those that I saw on eBay, and they're in the low thousands right now. And then they were graded like a nine. Yeah. And one thing I was going to point out uh, before you mentioned that is I think that's a great price. Like, I think it's pretty cool. Um, now you can't see the card right. in the magazine. So that takes away a little bit from that because the card could be creased. I mean, but they, they, actually they wouldn't grade it that high. So assuming, I, I guess if it's a nine, I assume the card is in real nice shape. Um, Do you tell them, would you recommend people get them graded with the cards or take, you know? Well, we can evaluate the yeah. cards and we've done that. We've evaluated a lot of the sheets from the Sports Illustrated for Kids with the uh, Tiger Woods rookie, the Serena rookie, there's a Kobe Bryant in one issue. Right. Um, rare that they're, you know, those have to be in the highest of grades that have huge value. Well, I mean, until we sold the Serena Williams card a couple of weeks ago, which became the highest selling card for a female athlete, and I believe still is at this very moment. That is correct. Um, the SI for Kids card was actually her highest selling card until that moment. Yeah, those are tricky because you can have a really nice Tiger Woods on the sheet, and then when you tear it apart, right. it's not a nine anymore. Yeah, and it's the middle card. So, so for me personally, as kind of a Tiger Woods collector, um, I, I think it would be cool to have it still intact, slabbed up. Yeah, yeah you can't see it, but you know what's in there. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> Very low odds you're going to get a 10 on that, and that's what you have to the do. Centering to get was a the, crazy the way price. that the print registered. Yeah, there's the card. Yeah, there, there was always, a, this is a really nice one. A lot of times uh, there was yellow on the edges from the card next to it. And you got to get lucky to, to where SI put the perforations because right. most of them, you'll tear them out and there'll be the yellow on the edge and then it won't be a nine or a 10. Uh, but yeah, the ones that That's Tommy it. back let there us, is showing us are pretty nice ones. Let us evaluate the cards. And if the cards we say, yeah, this would grade a seven or an eight, but the magazine is... A great copy that would grade high, grade the magazine. 
Right, but see, that's the difference. That's where you say don't send it into CGC to have it graded first because you want to evaluate Correct. the cards that and, are inside. And like I said before, you know, if for the lower value publications, we'd rather have you send them in right. there's early. A, but there's no 1996 Larry Johnson cover with the cards in them that isn't worth us taking it and giving it a nice inspection in person. All right, so magazines, obviously, I think we've done a – Good job of covering that. Unless there's anything else you want to say on the subject. Not unless we get any more questions about it. All right. So if you have <laughs> questions about magazines, we'll come back to them. But programs, I find fascinating. As the son of someone who collected programs, uh, my dad has his Dallas Eagles uh, signed by Vic Wirtz and a whole bunch of Cleveland Indians and New York Giants. I'll never get rid of it because it was my dad's. Um, but obviously, programs are significant. I'm always surprised that they weren't at the top of the collectibles market to begin with anyway. And people just haven't got programs graded yet. I went on eBay, there was 18 that have sold. I don't understand why not in as much as that that goes back to the ticket thing we were talking about last week. It's from a game, it's from a moment, it's from something. It hasn't you know, caught on yet. Um, tickets but, is really booming. Yeah. This is before tickets started booming are the programs. So now is the time. I mean, go through your old programs I was talking to one of my friends. He has Michael Jordan's debut program. I guarantee CGC hasn't graded one yet. He will be sending it in, yeah. hopefully consigning it. And who knows what that'll sell for. I mean, the the stubs, there's dozens of them now, and they're in the hundreds of thousands of dollar range. This program may be a one-on-one for a while. I've never seen another one. So um, there's a lot of programs like that. I actually um, was on eBay maybe a few weeks ago, and I bought the first Celtics NBA program. It was a few hundred dollars. It's in really rough condition, but I guarantee that, that CGC's never slab one. So I'm going to get it slabbed and I'm going to have a heck of a piece. And more yeah. likely for people to, A, everyone in the arena stadium got a ticket. Not everyone got a program. Right. And odds are you would keep the ticket, especially if something eventful happened, but maybe not the program. A lot of those just get discarded. So there is some rarity there with them. Well, let's talk about where the where the rarity lies, where the interest lies. In terms of what you're seeing, certainly, you know, a 1903 World Series is going to be different than a 1993 World Series unless something significant happens in a game or in a moment. Is it about the series? Is it about the teams? Is it about the players? Is it about the game? Is it about the moment? There's a 1903 World Series, as a matter of fact. So for, what, 144 uh, in 2018, I can't imagine what it would sell for today. A lot more. Yeah. Especially in a CGC slab, what would it sell for? Of course, those vintage items, those are great investments. Vintage things, especially uh, over 100-year-old program there. We have a 1927 World Series program here. Anything tied to the Yankees. Here, you want to hold that course, up? <laughs> of course, that has special value. Uh, would that fit in a normal slab? I think so. Let me see here. Too big. Too big. Yeah, that 1915 I, I don't World know. Series one behind you. Which I don't know if they have a slab that, that looks like a that. that looks brand new. That 1927 program. Yeah, it's got very... a crease through the middle, Rob. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It has great color, is what he said. It looks beautiful. It presents yeah. excellent. I mean, the pages are white. That's yeah, and I mean, aesthetically, those grades. people love those old graphics. Uh, the ads in there are spectacular. Um, but anything vintage like that is going to have a lot of value. And I expect to see an uptick, especially in these old baseball programs, the World Series. And one thing you were saying is, you know, a lot of people maybe didn't save their programs. I think for like the big events, the championship games, they did. Right. So one thing that I think is something that everybody should look for are the non-championship games with the debuts. And uh, Aaron Rodgers threw six touchdowns against the Texans. Whatever Kobe year that 81 was. point game. Kobe 81 point game. Although I guarantee if you bought a program from that one, you're keeping it. Yeah. But a lot of programs, like you buy them, like I'll go to a Rangers game. It's not necessarily a program for that game as much as it's a, you know, a season magazine. That kind of yeah. Thing. And baseball programs can be like that. And right. they're not as exciting. Uh, you, th there's usually a lineup card yeah. in some of these. And like you have to look at the lineup. If you have a, you know, the Roger Maris 61 scorecard right you have to make sure that someone didn't just later on pencil in that you know make it look like he hit his home run in that particular game you have to look at the lineup too right. because lineups change you have to make sure everything matches up well that's what i want to ask you about well how how difficult is that in terms of the this world of 
this new world of program collecting. How difficult is it? In terms of, you know, look, it's it's one thing to collect here, you know, here you've got the 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 champion, the NFL 65 championship, champ, 65 championship, championship game. game. You know, that you know where that's from, but obviously a, a, a magazine from a look, it could have been a Nolan Ryan seventh no hitter. It's just like a ticket stub. Right. You have to research it. Yeah. You know, if you have a stack of programs from the Yankees from the 40s, go and look up every game yeah. and see what happened in that game. And if, you know, if Joe DiMaggio hit three home runs in that game, get it slabbed and you got yourself a nice piece. And yeah. that's something where technology has really helped. You know, 20 years ago, if you wanted to research You have to this dig stuff, out magazines or newspapers. Or, yeah, or go to the your newspaper and go through their microfiche yeah, and go through all the details. But now everybody's got it in their pocket if you know what to look for. Is it as important for programs, the grades, as it is for magazines? I mean, this is a 4.5. It's a beautiful. Uh, it shows. I think the older you get, yeah. it's not as important. It would still be nice to get one of those in a 9.8. It sure. probably doesn't exist um, because it is that old. But, I mean, that shows really beautifully. You've got all the helmets. You've, it's really. The oh, color, this one you're Yeah, talking. the color's yeah, really four bright. And a half. It's a four or five, but I mean, it's a really. I thought this would grade a lot higher, to be honest with yeah. you. Um, they really dinged it pretty good. They might have found something inside that hurt the value, or hurt the condition. Uh, but the cover is nice on there. But yeah, I mean, in a perfect world, you'll you'll have an old program with nine point whatever grade on it. But I don't think if you have a nineteen. 36 NFL championship program. I think if you know, even if it grades a three or four or five, it's still going to be a one on one or darn near it because right. no one's getting him graded yet. Um, and uh, it's still a really, really significant and tough program without it being graded. Population report aside, it's still a tough program. So, but all that said, we don't know, we don't know what this market is. We've never got a 36. There's one right on the on the screen right now, we've never um, had one that was graded by CGC. What would it sell for in a CGC right. folder? I don't know, but I think that people are going to start finding out, and the prices may surprise us and be really high. Is CGC slabbing these oddly sized ones? Um, like which ones? Like that like Yankees the, Pirates is not the size of a normal. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. I don't know. I'd have to look. Um, I could do a little So research. we just sent in. We have a huge Muhammad Ali collection that's coming up this summer, and we just submitted recently to cgc a lot of the fight programs yeah. from there and uh essentially they you know they're different sizes they're if they're small they put an, a clear plastic insert right but if they're around bigger. the edges but if they're larger i don't know um essentially they said they would try to slab everything they can and the ones that don't fit or they can't find a way to make it fit they'll return to well, us they're too thick they're yeah. not you know long or, or wide but they're too thick and they don't fit in this slab well, that was my question about is turn of the century stuff, I assume, more difficult to get slabbed than it is for more modern pieces. And also going with that that question is do they have the expertise for some of these programs? I mean, I have some Packer programs that around the first year they were in the NFL and, and they're like one and two known to exist. Right. Will they slab those? Let's um, find out. Yeah, and that's something I'm thinking about. And that, you know, that's a real question because I am a collector and I have the first three Packer programs and I don't know if I want to send them to CGC to get slabbed. Why? They're so fragile. Yeah. They're like the thinnest newspaper type paper stock and they get really brittle, especially on the, the edges or the or the spine. And I'm afraid to get them um, slabbed. And then also if they're slab, I can't look at them anymore. Not that I do a lot, but you like to have the option. Um, but I also like the idea of it being preserved in this great holder and it being a one of one, according, you know, officially on their population report. It's something that I've been uh, trying to figure out. And before I send them in, I want to make sure that they would they would slab them because they are that rare and they don't have exemplars of these. So I think that's why you're the perfect representative for this, because you str you struggle with the very thing that I think most collectors struggle with. Right. Which yep. is I went to that game. I love thumbing through that program. Now I'm going to get it sealed. And, you know, look, you can always seal a Batman number one because you can always read it in 5,000 other trade, yeah, trade or online, paperbacks. Right. You can read it online. Same with magazines. Look, I, I can get this graded and sealed, but I can go buy you know, a $25 ding, dinged up copy at any moment. I mean, I could take, you know, my iPhone and shoot my shots of the program before I send it in a CGC. Right. And then, you know, I can always look at it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. 
Is and there... it's tough, like a lot of collectors are thinking, should I submit, should I not? Yeah. But you don't know what the values are. It's tough in this market. Another thing. Things are growing. Yeah, if I, saw, if I saw one of those programs sell for 200000 I'll be going back and putting that stamp on that <laughs> envelope. And I'll, be, Florida, I'll yeah. be setting it right to CGC. So, yeah. Yeah. But until I see that, you know. They're just throwing a lot of comps out really. there, especially for incredibly rare items like that. So I think that's why a lot of people are on the fence. As we move forward, more things are going to come out, more things are going to sell. It's going to be a little easier to determine what you have is worth, and then it's easier to make a more educated decision. I really hope they start putting the special attributes from the game on the on the label. That's a big thing. I do think that's going to come. I mean, you would think. Uh, it's I know such a big thing for the tickets, right? And they got a lot of room there, you know. With, PSA yeah. can do it with cards, and you know they have a very limited space on the label for those. But these, there's plenty of room for it. Yep. What are the two behind us? I see the Pennsylvania, Michigan, and the uh, World it's, 1950. Uh, obviously, the 1950 World like Series is sitting here behind us. This well. is a nice 1915 World Series program. I think this is a perfect candidate to get graded. You know that it'll fit in the slab. It has a beautiful cover. That one has the crease through the middle, which a lot of them did because people, the fans, put, are, in, their back put in their back pocket. And this one doesn't. So what a great program. The slick. I mean, it's a real. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, Babe Ruth World Series there. So And it's unscored. I mean, this is a beauty. A lot of hat ads. I Maybe like we should get one. this one graded before it, it goes in the auction. I think that's a pretty good idea. That would be a good uh, I love the back of that one, too. I pulled that one out just... Uh, Hoping that uh, Paul Mitchell's watching. Oh, there you pique go. Peak his interest. That's the 1913 Pennsylvania versus Michigan football program, uh, and it's just gorgeous. Are you seeing a number of? Are you seeing an uptick in submissions on programs that you? Honestly, no. Really? Are you surprised? They're just very rare, especially the ones that are this old, 100 yeah, years in that you know, condition. Too. You, you just but if rarely you do see them send at all. that in, I, everyone's big on the one of one, the pop one of one. That would be a one of one. I can almost guarantee it. If not, it would be a one of two or a one of three. So very low population. And there are a lot of Michigan collectors out there. So, um, yeah, but no, to answer your question, no, we haven't. And I think that this show, um, and and you said that one of our clients has a really great blog about CGC uh, programs and magazines. I talked to Once it gets you know more mainstream, you're going to see the submissions go up. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot of great resources out there, but... Uh... I talked to one of our clients, John Wiley. He has a blog, Sports Illustrated 98. Uh, it's concentrated on Sports Illustrated, but great information in there. Uh, he mentions us a lot, which is great. What is the web address? Sports Illustrated 98 is the name of the blog. And uh, he's been doing this for a long time. So he's got a lot of information. Uh, he's got some great things to share. So if you want to read up on it, there's uh, a lot of information on there. See, I'm fascinated by the program. <clears throat> there's a website right there. I'm fascinated by this category in as much as that programs do happen to be a thing I stumble across on eBay quite a bit. I'll see things for Cowboys games. I'll see things for Dallas Eagles games. There are programs that are out there. People don't put up, they don't ascribe at this point a lot of value to them. You can buy a program from a 1950s minor league baseball game, you know, that, you know, Somebody significant might have played in. Should you look at the at the score? And I, I sort of wonder if that opportunity isn't really if, if that really isn't the place to begin for a lot of people. If they if they want to take advantage of this new market, absolutely. What about things like artwork <clears throat> on the cover? A lot of programs have. I'm in favor of it. I mean, but that's a, appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of, uh, in fact, somebody selling, I saw on eBay the other day, the original artwork for a Cowboys program from 1966 or something like that. Not a huge market. Yeah. This, we did sell recently a Jim Brown painting. That, was that one did really, really on well. Of Sports My client was very surprised at the price, and I was surprised, but it did great. So that's Jim Brown, a legend. And it's Sports, Sports Illustrated. Illustrated. Yeah. Um, you have a nine eight of that pro or that of that magazine uh, graded, and then put it next to the original art. That's a great display, especially if you're a big Jim Brown guy. But I'm fascinated by by the art itself. I mean, hell, even high school football games used to have beautiful art First on the off, program. The fifties yeah. had great, and that's what I wonder. 50s. Is there there's the the Jim Brown painting? Uh, but I do wonder as well if there is not going to be some value for folks about that. Man, it's just a beautiful piece of work. 
or is it does it is it going to going to be always the game? The players I think of that's the game? a possibility. You know, when you look at the comic book market and how big the original art has become, right? Just a massive market. And you know, I remember, uh, gosh, it was over ten years ago. We were having an auction in New York in conjunction with the comic department, and they had the original art for Wolverine's first appearance. Yeah. And I looked at the estimate. I said, oh, 10 grand, that's a little steep for me, but I would love to own that. And, you know, I've been kicking myself ever since. So that's something that could come along down the road if this continues a nice trend where there's good prices uh, for magazines and programs. Then the artwork starts to come out. It, people start looking for it, is the thing. Well, I mean, we are selling a Leroy Neiman that was a cover of a Playboy in the upcoming illustration art. I mean, that's, but I'm just talking about the art itself, the, the, the magazine, the program itself. Mm -hmm. like I mean, man, that's a beautiful cover. I want to have that. I think if you're, you know, if you were a collector of that type of magazine when you were a kid, it, kind of transcends a lot. You know, the American, uh, the AFC Football League back in the 50s, Chicago Rockets or the 40s, they had the most beautiful, vibrant covers that were, that you know, they were cartoons right. drawn on them. And they're super cool. If you were a fan of the AFC or some players that played in there, you know, you display them and CGC holders be, you know, on your wall or whatever, they look great. So yeah, if you were into that, I think that the art on the cover would be super cool. And if you have something that's like CGC nine or above, there you go. Yeah, I mean, if you have a bunch of those from that year in high grade, the color is ridiculous. Whenever I'm at a card show and see a bunch of 1933 Gaudi cards that are all graded nine or higher, and they have them in a case next to each other, it's, it just hits you because you've never seen that before. So right. yeah, the art, you know, it. It could play into it in high grade, especially. I mean, yeah, look at those. It's definitely an area where aesthetics is going to play a big part. What looks good. Uh, these are great display items. Uh, so, yeah, if it, you know, a picture of Gretzky, young Gretzky is great. But uh, I do like that Gretzky cover, though, because it's the, it, mullet. the color and the mullet is very, very much like I Hockey had in hair. sixth grade. So I can. <laughs> We're going to need pictures of that. <laughs> Craig asks here, would it be worth grading a LeBron high school or last high school game program? Absolutely. Definitely. Especially right. if it's high grade. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen one in a CGC holder. Probably not. Um, but, yeah, get it graded and, you know, you know, we'd sell that for you. I mean, LeBron's one of those guys. Brady, Jordan, LeBron, yeah, those guys the are at the top. Um, there's going to be a great return on an investment yeah. for something rare or high grade. Tommy, I saw a question a moment ago about Sports Illustrated uh, and pop reports that, uh, if you don't mind uh, popping that back up as we begin to wind things down. CGC needs some kind of Sports Illustrated price guide on their site or a recent auction result page like PSA has. People want to buy but are afraid of overpaying because there are no comps. That is what our auction archives is yeah. for. It's a real time price guide, basically. And also, eBay, their completed results is great. Uh, that is the ultimate price guide is what an item sold for at auction. Right. So uh, it's free to sign up for our website. You don't need to buy anything. Just sign up. And, uh, yeah, we have millions of results. Everything that we've ever sold at Heritage, the result is online. It's pretty awesome. A lot of programs, a lot of magazines, and we are going to be selling a lot in the next few months. We've got a ton coming up in our May auction. There's going to be more over the summer, so we're going to have a lot more results to add to those archives. What is that very 91 soon. Jordan? That 9.8 is that up, that's upcoming, correct? I believe so. Yeah. Are there any of the? I mean, I keep thinking about the Miracle on Ice. I keep thinking about the the, the fact that there we just have must a be... Miracle on Ice coming up really? in May. Sports well. Illustrated. Sports yep. Illustrated with the iconic photo of them all falling all over I've each never other. Seen a program from that. I don't know if they made programs, but I've seen a. I thousand either. tickets tickets and ticket stubs uh but yeah that would be a, if they did you know anything like that any significant moment in sports history or entertainment history um would be cool to have in a cgc holder and, and the good thing about heritage is we have a sports department we have an entertainment department uh so we can handle it all there it is it's live right now it's only at 31 dollars, but they are is Tommy's well, Tommy's on his game over yeah, there. Yeah, I want to give that guy a high five more day. He's right <laughs> on point today. Our Tommy Noel, our director, is uh, <laughs> and Linda. They're both extraordinary people. They're fantastic directors, and I think they'd all make better hosts than me, quite frankly. But let's find out next week.
Let's find out next week. <laughs> Anything you want to talk about next week? We'll come up with something. Are you finally sure. leaving town at some point? Um, Maybe. <laughs> May, I might be here next Tuesday. If anyone has anything else that they'd like uh, us to talk about, we might be able to fit it in before I head back to the freezing cold Midwest. Yeah, we definitely have experts of everything. We have 25 employees just in the sports department. Uh, so if there is something out there that you don't think is being covered well enough, we'd love to hear from you and uh, tackle that subject. And if you want to consign programs, magazines, or anything else, Chris N at HA.com and Mike P at HA.com. But please make sure they're graded, unless if they're very serious. Magazines, raw. programs on it. Yes. yes. Cards, we'll take them in raw all day long. But um, happy to advise on, we can definitely should advise. this be graded? Should you submit this? Or is it better to People just send you pictures of stuff? Every day, all day. Long. Yes, you can, you can always reach me at any of our social media platforms as well. That's right. Mike does run the social media for Heritage Auctions Sports and does a damn good job. Much appreciated. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate it. This, uh, again, I promised it would be much shorter than the uh, ticket discussion, and yet I realize we've almost hit an hour as well. So we can talk about this stuff all day. It feels like it lasted eight minutes. Yeah. That's the true joy and pleasure that I get from being in your company. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I'm sure we'll do another one of these in, for sports sooner than later and for another category after that. Gentlemen, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.